My name's Tiagi Maitri, and this is Naiswami Ananta. And we're very happy to welcome you to Sunday service today, especially welcoming our guests and visitors to the Expanding Light, and a special welcome to our guests online. And also want to congratulate those that just graduated from meditation teacher training. Today's reading is from Rays of the One Light, weekly commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita. Truth invites, it never commands. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. Free will is basic principle, a basic principle of life. God never coerces. He invites us to live in such a way that we find fulfillment in ourselves. If we refuse to live rightly, Paramahansa Yogananda taught, God simply says, I will wait. We have eternity to live. In that eternity, we live as we choose, in self-created darkness, a darkness as intense and as long-lasting as we choose, or in infinite light, the true self, which is God. Jesus Christ in the Beatitudes offered a beautiful example of God's way of inviting mankind to seek perfection, not by commanding, but by offering his human children the incentive they need to choose the right of their own volition. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus said, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In each of these Beatitudes, Jesus explains the blessing attendant upon observing it. The divine way, similarly, for each of us is not to do violence to our own natures, Spiritually, spirituality must be obtained naturally. It can never be obtained by force. 
The Bhagavad Gita says in the third chapter, even the wise behave in accordance with nature as it is manifested in them. Of what avail then is suppression? The scripture then goes on, however, to explain that this doesn't mean we should surrender to the dictates of our lower nature. Rather, it emphasizes our need to aspire to the heights, but each of us in accordance with his own nature and not in imitation of anyone else's, offering up ourselves for purification by divine grace. Desire, whatever form it takes, so the Bhagavad Gita explains, should be resisted even if only mentally. Attachment and repulsion to sense objects, both of these are universally rooted. No one should accept their influence, for verily they are man's enemies. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Oh. wondering why Maria isn't here. She has a little cough and couldn't do it. So Mayatri said she'd help. <laughs> we wanted to keep you in suspense. <laughs> I'd like to read from Whispers from Eternity. This is a um, book that Paramahansa Yogananda wrote. This is uh, Tune Us, that we might hear thy voice. Volumes of thy Savior voice resound through the loudspeaker of every loving heart. The voice of thy wisdom roams through the ether of space, seeking everywhere hearts that are tuned to ecstasy. Sadly, thy warning sir sermons pass unheard by souls, deafened with the static of sense pleasures. O divine broadcaster, tune our souls, long distracted by the static of our indifference. Fine tune us with the delicate touch of soul perception. Grant us the privilege of hearing thy magic melodies in the ecstasy of divine awakening. So our topic is that truth invites, it never commands. And yesterday was the anniversary of Kriyananda's discipleship. So uh, I think we've maybe been thinking about him more than we do all the time. And uh, what I was thinking about was the way that Kriyananda was always inviting us to join him in this great adventure of Ananda. Uh, I wasn't here at the very beginning of Ananda, thank God. <laughs> for, the, for Ananda, not for me. <laughs> but... But always, Swamiji would, one of his favorite songs was to start with, Come Gather Round. Come Gather Round. This is an invitation. We're going to seek God together. We're going to find God together. We're going to practice yoga. And we're going to start a restaurant called Earth Song. And he would, he would be so enthused. And he'd say, let's start a restaurant. Master had a restaurant. He'd tell us all about this. And we'd all be, yes, this is a great idea. And your enthusiasm was always first. And the hard work involved in starting a restaurant <laughs> was way in the back of your mind. And that's good. Uh, because it's that inviting of truth. This is the way that Christ gave us the Beatitudes. Is blessed are the peacemakers. Uh, not the hard work of peacemaking, not the shuttle diplomacy and all that. But, but blessed are the peacemakers. They're the children of God. It's the incentive that really draws us towards the spiritual path. And I don't know of anyone, I can't think of anyone, that was more enthusiastic about inviting people to join uh, in his latest guidance from Master than Kriyananda. It was a restaurant, it was Mountain Song, it was the market, it was the schools, it was on and on and on. It was some new expression of divine love as an offering. And he would always uh, invite people to join him. And this is the way the truth works. Uh, 
I think of spiritual teachers that I've known, and I, as the years go on, it gets to be more and more and more. But I can't think of a Hindu or a Christian or a, a rabbi or a, an Amir or anyone that I've ever met on the spiritual path that doesn't invite people to join them in a positive way because of their experience of God. You find that the people that command you to join usually haven't had the experience of God. They have had the experience of faith or belief or dogmatism or something, but they don't have that vibration of joy. When Kriyananda invited you to join with us in this feast of joy, which is one of the affirmations of the postures, join us in this feast of joy, it was because he had the experience, he had the vibration within his consciousness, and when he invited you, he dangled that joy in front of you, and you thought, that's what I want. Yes, that's what I want. Earth song, the restaurant, that's going to bring me joy. And it did. And the school and the community and the, let's go to Sacramento and start a, a community in the, in the city. Yes, that's a wonderful idea, Swamiji. Let's go to Italy. Yes, let's go to Italy. They'll love yoga in Italy, although we didn't know why at the time. Let's go to India. Yes, let's go. Let's form the Gandharvas. Yes, let's do that. Because the enthusiasm was coming from him. Truth invites. It doesn't command. It doesn't need to command. When you hear these, quote, religious people giving you these orders or fatwas or whatever they are, there's no joy in that. Who wants to join that? There's no, there's no experience of God. The experience of God is that joy. And that's the way the truth comes to us. And immediately... When we move in that direction, we find, wait a minute, there's a place inside of me that has that. This is actually revealing a place inside of me. It's called education for life, living wisdom. That's why, because the vibration of wisdom is in this affirmation, and it comes to us when we see it on the outside, it comes to the fore within us, and we feel it. And that's how we move forward. That's how we move towards light and towards joy. It's by that enthusiasm, it's by that attunement. It's not a command. I can't think of anything that Kriyananda ever told me to do. Uh, one or two things. <laughs> There's a great story about Yogananda, though. There was two ladies, and they were in his talk, and they got up to leave, and Yogananda said, you two, sit down. You'll never hear a talk like this in your life. <laughs> so I, I guess on occasion, Master could, could call in the command station, but it was awfully rare. I, I really can't think of many times when Swamiji said, you must do this. More, he said, wouldn't, wouldn't we want to do this? Wouldn't, we, wouldn't you like to do this? And, and the answer is yes, I would like to do this. In my higher self, I would like to do this. And that's how... We move towards God. I'll tell you a story about when we dedicated the Seattle Mondir. I think some of you were there. I think a lot of you were there. We had a big, we built this beautiful temple in Bothell in Seattle. It's the meditation temple. So we were all ready for the dedication. Swami Kriyananda was there. Freeman and Padma were there. Willow and Cliff were there. Everybody was there. And we came from all the, the colonies. And so we were there, and it's this beautiful dome. It has a big blue roof. It's, it's just a really wonderful. This is probably 15, 20 years ago. Anyway, so we're all there. And so coming to our event, our dedication was a man who said he was a, a preacher of a Christian denomination. Well, he was not enthused about our meditation temple. In fact, he was there to protest our, our meditation temple. He was a very unusual uh, Christian man. I don't know, well, I won't judge his Christianity, but it didn't seem a lot like Jesus to me. But anyway, he had a bullhorn, and he had a big <laughs> sign, and he was walking back and forth on the sidewalk, and, and the bullhorn was saying, Ananda is a cult. Swami Kriyananda is a heathen or an antichrist or something or other. I can't remember exactly the charges, but <laughs> there were many. <laughs> and uh, so he's walking back and forth. So 
um, it, it turned out that he basically had three things that he really didn't like, and he had a sandwich board to explain them. One was professional sports teams. <laughs> They're very bad. And uh, gay people were very bad. And Ananda, we were the three <laughs> targets for, for the weekend. So um, on Friday, he went to the Mariners game, and he was protesting there. They're a baseball team. And then on Saturday, he came to our dedication, boo, and then the gay pride parade was Sunday. So it was a big weekend for this man. <laughs> so Fremont, noting that things were not going well, sent me over with uh, Bajrang and Raghu. So the three of us were there. We were talking to him and trying to be cordial and positive, and I thought we were doing a pretty good job. He wasn't having much of us, though, but he kept with the bullhorn. There was a, a fraternity across the street, and the, some of the young men were drinking beer. They were having a kegger, and they were, <laughs> they were drinking beer, and they, were, they got on our side. They said, hey, Ananda's okay. Leave him alone. <laughs> you know, they were yelling at him. The poor man, he didn't have a friend in the world. Anyway, <laughs> so he was going back when the police came because there's decibel levels that involve bullhorns, and you can't. Anyway, long story short. So we're coming up to dedication time. So uh, the three of us are tr doing our best, and we're not getting that far. So up comes Swami Kriyananda, of course, and uh, Riemann's driving. And Swami pulls up next to him and rolls down the window, and he said, would you like to come in and join us? We're, there's a picture of Jesus on the altar, <laughs> and there'll be some music and singing, you might enjoy, come on in. <laughs> well, the poor man was really flustered. He didn't know what to make of this, because this was this evil Kriyananda, and he just seemed like a very nice old man in the back of a car. And, he, and so he, he kind of gathered himself together and got back to his protesting, and he didn't come in. And later on, we, we brought him some Indian food, and uh, I think Blues Dharmadas had that idea. <laughs> he brought him some food, and he looked at it, and. He started to melt a little, but then he, he composed himself and got back to being negative and protesting. He wouldn't take any of our food. But it's just that energy of, I just, Swami was so sweet. Just, oh, why don't you come in? You know, I thought he'd sing, come gather around or something, but he didn't. He just said, come on in. There's a picture of Jesus on the altar, and there's some singing, and you might really enjoy it. And just welcoming. Come. Come enjoy. Come live on this level of Christ consciousness. This is truth inviting. And the Beatitudes, how eloquent. Just come, enjoy this consciousness, and what will happen? You will experience this consciousness. So we need to clear our consciousness of that negative pull. We need to invite truth. As truth is inviting us, we need to invite truth. When we go to meditate, we need to invite high states of consciousness to come in and fill our minds. We need to eliminate lower states of consciousness, negativity. We need to eliminate those self-definitions which don't allow us to be the children of God, which don't allow us to be the peacemakers. We need to invite high states of consciousness. So every time you go to meditate, clear your mind, clear the deck. Try to let go of what's happening in the day. Tense and relax is the physical way to do this. But put your mind in that space of the masters. Invite the masters. Pray to the masters. Say, masters, let's meditate together. Let's, let's come gather around. Babaji, Christ, Buddha, come on. Let's, let's meditate together. Let's be in that consciousness. Let's be avatars together, sitting in light, sitting in calmness. Invite truth into your meditation. Invite truth into your consciousness during the day. Try to, if you find that your consciousness is, oh no, I have to clean up again. Oh, I have to clean up every Tuesday, you know, oh no. <sighs> Down goes the energy. Cleanliness, the yamas, cleanliness, contentment. Whoa, what a wonderful job. I'm the cleanup man on Tuesdays. Oh, what fun this will be. Try to bring in that consciousness, invite it in, so that it becomes your guest. And when I was a little kid and we'd have guests, my mom would say, okay, boys, we have guests. We have to clean the house. <laughs> okay. Okay, consciousness, sit, mental citizens, clean the house. We have guests coming. Babaji and Shiva and Krishna are all coming over for this meditation. Let's, let's clean out these negative thoughts. Let's clean out this uh, past fears. Let's clean out limitations. Let's invite our, the consciousness of joy to come in with 
when you meditate or when you serve. Invite those consciousness so they become your regular guests, so that you're living in joy, so that you're the peacemaker, you're the children of God. Of course you are. Then that consciousness becomes comfortable and invite them constantly. The commanding not really needed. If you're busy inviting, you're not busy in commanding. Just the other, the negative thoughts, the lower thoughts, they'll, they'll just kind of move out the back door because the space is being made for the masters, for your own higher consciousness. Invite that consciousness, make friends with that consciousness, and then you find you live in that consciousness more and more. We had the, the celebration of Kriyananda's um, anniversary of discipleship, which was September 12th. And I think of all the things that happened September 12th. It became this hallmark day. The Ananda community of Sacramento was acquired on September 12th. The Mondair in Sacramento was acquired on September 12th. If you've ever done a real estate deal with all these people and title companies and banks and loans, you can't tell what day it's going to happen, but it always happens September 12th. Why? Because we invite Swamiji's grace. We invite the masters. You invite them and they come. And then it's, it's not a surprise that they come. It shouldn't be, but it can be. But that consciousness comes. Make yourself always open to that. Invite everything to come and join you in that feast of joy. Hold in your own mind the self-image that you are free like the purification ceremony, by the grace of our masters, you are free. When you go to meditate, when you go to serve, when you take on a new project that has no chance of succeeding, in your mind, it doesn't. With your skills, it doesn't. With your education, it doesn't. With your background, it doesn't. With the grace of the masters, piece of cake. No problem. Happens all the time. Anand is a history of impossible situations that master has taken care of by just moving everyone around, getting this person to come, this phone call comes, this letter comes, this comes, that comes. Why? Because we're here as part of the masters. They can do anything. You can do anything with their grace. If you think the ego can do it, you're in trouble. <laughs> I would invite someone else over. You know, I would invite the masters over. Let them do it. They will do it. But always invite that consciousness and be appreciative for it. Be appreciative that that grace is flowing. Even little things that happen in your life every day, there's just wonderful things happen. And they're amazing. They're amazing in the sense that Divine Mother would take time for your little, insignificant, little thing to happen. I mean, does God really care if you get the 20 pounds of zucchini? Not really. In the cosmic sense, it's not a big deal. But the fact that she did it, yay, way to go, God. That was really, really nice. And it makes it sweeter, the intimacy of it. You always, I always felt with Kriyananda that it was the intimacy of it. He told those stories about getting little donations for a new car and things like that. It isn't earth-shaking, but it's divine. The divine can be earth-shaking, but it can also be intimate. And invite that. Invite that intimacy. When you talk to a friend, you don't give them commands. When you talk to your wife, your girlfriend, you don't give them commands. You invite love. Love invites. Kindness invites. That was the nature of Kriyananda's life. That's the nature of the Beatitudes. Is You don't even be a peacemaker so that you can be a child of God. You just be a peacemaker because it's what you need to do. That's the part that Mayati read about your own nature. You just have your own nature. You have your personality. You have this and that. Okay, can I energize it with the divine and make it into something worth offering? Answer, yes. You can do it. And it may not be front page news. You may not even hold a position, fame or fortune. That, that may not ever happen. But it doesn't matter. If you have God, you have everything. What does it matter if the world thinks you're great? That's not important. That's the command stuff. We can do without that. We can do with the invite stuff. It's much nicer, much sweeter. Invite God in and invite the Divine Mother and you will find that that invitation is never rejected. 
She is your mother. Of course she won't reject that invitation. Be with her always. God bless you all. I heard your flute high on a cloud. Your call I can't resist. Oh, let me come and play with you. We'll scatter music with the dew and sound the morning mist. I've heard you piping on a hill. All else I've set aside. Oh, let us dance the mountain peaks. We'll skip with breezes on the creek. And soar the valleys wide. A song that heaven's joy recalls Here in my heart you see